everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my tutorial channel. Daniel here and today I'm going to talk about topic 8, hypothesis testing. The first part, basics, principles. And in this lesson, I'm going to first show you how to define a no and the alternative or alternate hypothesis, how to test and state the conclusions, and how to define type 1, type 2 errors. So first, let's take a look at how to define the no and the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is also called the alternate hypothesis. Let's look at this situation. Air pollution has become a serious health problem in many cities. One of the forms of air pollution that health officials are most concerned about is particulate matter, PM which refers to five particles that can be trapped in the lungs, increasing the risk of respiratory disease. Some of the PM in the asthma fee comes from the car exhaust. So one important way to reduce PM pollution is to design automobile engines that produce less PM. The following example will show how hypothesis testing can play a part in this effort. So a study published in the Journal of the Air and Waste Management Association reported that the mean amount of PM produced by cars and light trucks in an urban setting is 35 milligrams of PM per mile of travel. Suppose that a new engine design is proposed that is intended to reduce this level. Now there are two possibilities. Either the new design will reduce the level or it will not. So this is a situation where the um, um, a new engine design is proposed that it is intended to reduce this level. So uh, the scientists want to uh, test whether the new engine design is effective. So there are two possibilities. Either the new design will reduce the level, that means the new design is effective. The second possibility is the opposite. The new design will not reduce the level, that means it's failed to reduce the level. So the new design is not effective. And these two possibilities are called the hypothesis. So to be specific, the no hypothesis here says that the new engine will not reduce the level. So the mean for the new engines will be the same as the old mean engines. So mu is around 35 or mu is greater or equal to 35. The alternate hypothesis say that the new, in, uh, the new design will reduce the level, so mu is less than 35. So you see there are two possibilities here. The first possibility is, is the new design, the new engine design is not effective because the, the new mean is either the same or greater than the old mean. And the alternative hypothesis or the alternate hypothesis say that the new design is effective because it's reduced the level. So the mu is less than 35. Here depends on the textbook you use and depending on your instructor. Some instructors want to make the course easier by uh, setting the no hypothesis to be always mu is equal to a specified value. And the alternative hypothesis is the trick inequality, but in some out of textbook, especially for higher level, we use the non-trick inequality for the no hypothesis and the tricked inequality for the alternate hypothesis. So you have to pay attention to your course. Uh, check with your book, uh, check with your, your book, your materials, check with your instructor to see with no hypothesis statements that your instructor are going to use. 
So definition, here in this lesson, in this series of videos, I'm going to use the easy way, that is, um, the no hypothesis is always mu is equal to a specified value. So the definition is the no hypothesis about a parameter states that the parameter is equal to a specified value. For example, the no hypothesis says that mu is equal to 35, and usually the no hypothesis is denoted by h x0 or x0, this is called x0. The alternate or the alternative, we have two ways to call uh, the opposites of the no hypothesis, either the alternate or the alternative hypothesis. About a parameter states that the value of the parameter differs from the value specified by the no hypothesis. And we have many type of differs here. Either it can be strictly less than or strictly greater or just simply differs. And the alternative hypothesis is denoted by H1. In some textbook, we use HR, uh, HA, HA. So you have to check with your instructor and your, your notebook to see what notation you have to use for the alternate hypothesis and uh, how to define the no hypothesis. Let's look at this example. Example 1. Last year, the mean monthly rent for an apartment in a, uh, in a certain city was $800, $800. A real estate agent believes that the mean rent is higher this year. State the appropriate no and alternate hypothesis. So here we have two possibilities. The first one, the first one is the mean rent is higher than uh, is higher this year, and the second possibility is the opposite. The mean rent is not higher. So for the first possibility, we use a trick inequality because it's higher. That means it's strictly higher. So mu is greater than eight hundred. Mu is the um, the mean monthly rent for an apartment in a certain city uh, in the certain cities this year. And the second possibility is the mean range is not higher. So it should be equal. It should be equal. Or it should be less than. But uh, to be simple, we use equal. Equal. But for advanced level, we use mu is less than or equal to 800. And we see here the third possibility is the tricked inequality because we have a trick inequality side here. Mu is strictly greater than 800. So the first possibility represents the alternate hypothesis. And the second possibility is the no hypothesis because we have the equal side here. We have the equal side. So that's how we define the alternate and the, high, uh, alternate and the no hypothesis. Let's look at the second example. Scores on a standardized test have a mean of 70. Some modifications are made to test to the test, and an educator believes that the mean may have changed. State the appropriate no and alternate hypothesis. Again, similar to uh, the first problem, there are two possibilities here. The first possibility is the mean may have changed. So that means the new mean is different from the old mean. And the second possibility is the mean have not changed. So mu is equal to 800. Mu is the new mean. And again, because the second possibility um, comes with equal size, so the second possibility represents the no hypothesis. And the third one represents the alternate. So that's how we define the no and the alternative hypothesis. And we see at the alternative hypothesis, sometimes you see mu is less than, sometimes you see mu is strictly greater, sometimes you see mu is different. So corresponding to these three types of alternate hypotheses, we have three types of uh, tests. The left tail 
the a left tail alternate hypothesis states that the parameter is less than the value specified by the no hypothesis. That means we test on the left side of the specified value. Here, example, x1 mu is strictly less than 35. That means we test on the left area of 35. A right tail alternate hypothesis states that the parameter is greater than the value specified by the no hypothesis. For example, x1 mu is strictly greater than 35. Strictly greater than 35. Basically, we test on the right side of 35. And a two tail alternate hypothesis test states that parameter is not equal to the value specified by the no hypothesis. For example, mu is not equal to 35 because we test on both sides of 35, but not at the point 35. So that's how we define the no, the alternative hypothesis, how we define whether a test is left tail, right tail, and two or two tail. And for left tail and right tail, these two tests are called one tail test, one tail test. So that's how we define the, the hypothesis. Now we um, we learn how to test and state conclusion. Um, the purpose of a hypothesis test is to determine how plausible the no hypothesis is. And we usually begin with a hypothesis test by assuming the no hypothesis to be true. And then if the data provide strong evidence against the no hypothesis, we reject this and believe the alternative hypothesis. A hypothesis test is considered to be a hypothesis trial. It's, it's just like a criminal trial. At first, we assume that um, a person is innocence. Innocence. And then we if we have a strong evidence to against the no hypothesis, we state that the person is not innocence. Otherwise we cannot make conclusion. So if there is sufficient evidence to reject the no hypothesis, we conclude that the alternate hypothesis is true. If there is not sufficient evidence to reject the no hypothesis, we conclude that the no hypothesis might be true, but we never conclude that the no hypothesis is true. So let's look at this example. Boxes of a certain kind of cereal a label as containing 20 ounces. An inspect inspector thinks that the mean mean, uh, the mean weight may be less than this, or he uh, so he performs a test of the no hypothesis status mu is equal to 20 versus the alternate hypothesis states that mu is strictly less than 20. He does not reject the no hypothesis, state an appropriate conclusion. So we see here, he does not reject the no hypothesis. That means we do not have sufficient evidence to conclude that the alternate hypothesis is true. We can also express this as follow. There is not enough evidence to conclude that the mean weight of zero boxes is less than 20 ounces. So it should be either equal or uh, that means we don't have enough uh, evidence. The, um, the mean weight might be equal or greater. And the last thing I want to go over today is type 1 and type 2 error. Whenever a decision is made, there is a possibility that it is a wrong decision. And there are two ways to make a wrong decision with a hypothesis test. Let's look at this table. Uh, whenever we make a decision, we have our decision and re the re reality, our statement and the truth. 
So, in the realities, there are two possibilities. X not is true or X not is false. And for our decision, we can also have either reject X not or do not reject X not. So, if the no hypothesis is false and we reject this, or the no hypothesis is true and we do not reject this, we have correct decision. Otherwise, we have wrong decision. And there are two types of um, incorrect statements. If in reality, the no hypothesis is true, but we reject this because we thought it's wrong, that is type 1 error. If in reality, the no hypothesis is wrong, but we do not reject this, that is type 2 error. So definition, rejecting the no hypothesis when it is true is called a type 1 error. And failing to reject the no hypothesis when it is false is called a type 2 error. Let's look at this example. The dean of a business school wants to determine whether the mean starting salary of graduates of her school is greater than 50,000. She will perform a hypothesis test with the following no and alternate hypotheses. The note say uh, the note states that the uh, the the mean starting salary is fifty thousand dollars, versus the alternate hypothesis is the mean starting salaries of graduates of her school is triply greater than fifty thousand. You see that the alternative is a right tail inequalities because mu triply greater than a specified value, we test it on the right side of 50,000. So this is a right tail test. Suppose that the true mean is 50,000 and the dean rejects x naught. Is this a type 1 error, type 2 error, or a correct decision? So let's look at the, um, let's look at the decision and the reality. Here it said like the true means is mu is equal to 50,000. So in reality, x naught is true. But our decision is we reject this. So we reject x naught when x naught is true. This is type 1 error. Another situation, suppose that the true mean is mu is equal to 55,000. So that means x naught is false. x naught is false. And the dean rejects x naught. Is this type 1, type 2, or correct decision? So here in reality, the, the no hypothesis is false because the no hypothesis says that mu is equal to 50,000, but the true mean is 55,000, so the no hypothesis is false. And our decision is we reject this. So we reject the no hypothesis when it is false. This is a correct decision. And the last um, situation, Suppose that the true mean is $55,000 and the dean does not reject x naught. Is this a type 1 error, type 2 error, or a correct decision? So, in reality, the no hypothesis is false because the true mean is $55,000, but the no hypothesis says that the true mean is $50,000. So, in reality, x naught is false, and in our decision, we does not reject, we do not reject x naught. So this is type two error because the dean failed to reject x naught when x naught is false. So that's it. That's everything of today. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed my view and see you next time. Bye.